Frank. Frank, mind it, man. Can I be frank? It's all about capturing real, authentic, unedited conversation. No, there isn't that much background noise here. That's actually very bright there, isn't it? That shiny slot. fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go. That's a bit better, is it? No, let me just turn that there now. How's that there now? Jeez, we look amazing. You have the full head of hair though, haven't you? I you do, just yeah. chosen to shave it. <laughs> yeah. why, why on Christ would you fucking shave it? No. I always when I was sixteen, I kind of shaved my head, and um, I had kind of flat tops and things like that. But I always kept my hair like, short. Yeah. And then, um, so I always had it shaved. And then I, I was learning kung fu and qigong from the Shaolin monks in London for years. Wow. And um, they all had their head shaved anyway. But it was just like, it was just so much easier to have. So and I actually feel, I feel terrible when my hair grows. Do you? I tried it once, maybe just before we married, about twelve years ago, just to see what it was like. And once it gets past this, oh, I just feel terrible. Is that that's like Samson almost? It's like the reverse. The, the reverse of Samson. Yeah, but yeah. like even just the idea of going like that for a moment, no. No, it's just <laughs> oh, something. The dream. It's kinda, That'd be it's, the dream now. It's kind of something about it. It's really strange. And and every time I say I might say to myself, okay, I'm gonna try and maybe push it and see how I feel maybe not cut my hair every once a week maybe twice a week and I, it's like this morose kind of feeling comes over me after a while it's just it's something about it it's, it's the reverse do you think it's like psych- yeah do you think it's psychological that like that uh, totally thing? totally psychological it's like yeah. somebody saying oh I don't like wearing a certain colour or something you know it's just for me I just I just feel better when it's kind of short and what's about your wife would she be curious about seeing it a bit longer she likes it like no, she really likes it short and, and when we when when I started to grow, and I only grew a little bit, maybe that much, um, she was horrified. Was she really? <laughs> and everyone that knew me was like, oh my God, that's terrible. You oh, know? Uh, well, I know my wife, if I had hair, she'd just be jumping with joy. <laughs> Something new, like, <laughs> she'd love that. Fuck's sake. Um, it, as a matter of interest, uh, when you're meeting somebody for the very first time, have you yeah. ever before uh, gone for a swim in the sea, when you met somebody for the very first time? Probably that's have the actually. First. No, that's no, the first. first. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Well, I tell you what, you learn a lot about somebody when you're kind of get, meeting them. Firstly, obviously, first impressions. But yeah. then when you're getting to see, you know, it's like you're immediately seeing how a person reacts to extreme pressure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Go on. So you, what, what did you think of my? <laughs> Very good. Like you were just gonna, yeah. just got in no bother, and then you went. You know, so yeah. Um, it's it interesting cold. to see people's reactions to, to the sea because. Yeah, my my wife Josie now she she swims a lot now with me but when she was starting um, a lot of people do this you know they kind of go into the sea mm. up to their knees or maybe their thighs and then they stop yeah and okay. they stand there for ages which is like torture because it's That's far fucking worse torture, yeah. yeah and then they're slowly going in I'm like get in it'll be over I get in so um, I get think in stop thinking about it yeah. I think it's kind of like um, what's, what's the phrase rabbit in the headlights it's kind of like that you know you get in it's so cold to this point and you're just kind of frozen yeah figuratively frozen um you know your body's just like don't go any further don't go any further but uh, but it almost teaches you that doesn't really in a way that's what the cold showers uh would teach you that um like i saw a, t- a ted talk on the cold showers this idea of just you know say shit that you don't want to do in life but uh, you know it's okay you kind of have a mental block about yeah. doing something and then you g- just go and do it and it's like you know you start pricking around outside the shower or you're pricking around in the sea yeah and you're hesitating and you're debating it just get in and i i was actually using the expression for a while cold showers just get in just do just, it yeah, yeah. just do it yeah. because i think 
there's, there is this part of you that, don't, that doesn't want to do it. You know, Every whole, part of you. Like, I think it's even a deeper part of you. I think there's, there's maybe a bit of us that knows by getting into the shower or into the cold that it's going to have some benefit. And there's some kind of, I don't know what it is, a little shadow in us somewhere that's kind yeah. of saying, it, don't do it. You know, it's all right. Just leave me where I am here. Yeah, you know? nice and safe. At yeah, least I'm yeah. safe here. I might be miserable. Because I've started doing it with the, with the ice baths now. I'm trying to do the ice baths uh, every day or in the sea every day. Yeah. And even, I can, I can I'm aware of my own process before doing it. You know, and beforehand, like the ice bath is there and you're looking at it and you know I have to get in. But then I'll say, okay, I'll just kind of do these little few things over here and then I'll get in the ice bath. And then, and then I was like, once, you're, once the ice bath is ready, yeah. no messing around. Yeah. Just take your clothes off get straight in yeah. and don't be thinking I'll get my clothes off and hang them up or you know it's uh, all the time it's it's nearly stalling to give you a chance to not do it yeah it is yeah or so, delayed pain you see but I suppose no but it is you are bringing pain I mean that or it's, it's how is your body going to react or it's just this fear of uh, but you know what we do because we're well let's go back how and how did you get into um well, I mean, there's loads to talk about, but let's say, say how did you get into this? This is where, cold therapy in particular. How um, did you get into it? But obviously you, you do a lot more. You're uh, it's traditional Irish. What, you can say, what, what is it you do exactly? Yeah. On, on, so there's a few you make a living out of this. I have, I have two businesses. Okay. I have the kind of traditional Irish healing bit, which is yeah. kind of breathing and healing and herbs. Yeah. And then I have uh, a business where I advise companies and organizations on how to do better business digitally. You know, okay. so I have, I've kind of two businesses and they vie for my attention. All right. You know, so whichever has more work, that's the one I kind of do. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, the kind of the digital business is there to allow me to do more of the other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so that's, that's how I split my time. That's how I do it. Yeah. Okay. And so how... Um, obviously, I presume um, uh, that if you had a choice, you'd be doing the breathing and the herbs, or and you wouldn't be doing the business one. Or is kind that the of, case? It, at the moment, really say, well, at the moment, I kind of I enjoy the mix of it, you know, because the digital stuff, the internet to me is so fascinating. Yeah. Okay. And it allows me to do things that I couldn't have done 10, 15, 20 years ago. And I started, my first job was in 1999 uh, in a startup called iVenus.com here in Dublin. Right. You know, so I've kind of, it's the only industry I know. Mm. And I think there's, there's so much that can be, so much good that can come out of it. Mm. That, that kind of, that kind of is very interesting to me. So yeah. for this point in my life, I am really delighted that I can still work in that right. field. Yeah. And do the, the other stuff. I think eventually maybe one will phase out the digital stuff will probably phase out maybe over the next I don't know, 10 years or so 10 15 years but i'm letting the whole thing kind of move organically you know right because i do enjoy it it's not like i'm trying to get rid of that to do the other stuff yeah okay i like enough. the mix of it because i think it uses both um both sides i was about to say but it uses lots of different parts of my mm. brain and i kind of enjoy that okay yeah that's interesting so, well, so how did you end so working in business and whatever you obviously went down you obviously started looking for other stuff in life. Were you always interested in this side? or I was kind of very lucky that my mom was always um, interested in healing. Mm. She is called a uh, ban fassa, which would be the Irish word for, um, you know, a woman of knowledge, a woman, a healer, um, you know, a shaman. You know, okay. That type of thing. White so witch? No? Could be, yeah. The yeah. children often call her that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so for me growing up, you know, I was, I was, when I was growing up, I was dedicated to playing basketball. I played in the Irish team and that was my thing. You know, I was absolutely dedicated to that. Mm. And mom was always in the background and dad as well. And they were very open to lots of different things. Yoga back then was kind of not as mainstream as it was yeah. now. So these things were always in the house. And I was, you know, so when I'd go f to play a match, mom would say to me, now, use your third eye to visualize, <laughs> oh, you know, what's Christ. going on. You know, and, and one way as a teenager, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then as I got further into so the Irish team setup, our coach would actually have us do visualization exercises, yeah. which is the exact same thing. Yeah, so, okay, that's interesting. So let's say before um, big international matches, you know, I would lie in bed the night before and visualize how, how the game would, would evolve, you mm -hmm. know. And, and this is the kind of trick was 
not to do it from the third person looking at the game, but to do it from the first person in the game. Right. So I kind of started to see that you know the stuff that mom and dad were interested in was really practical as well. So just a, just a different way of talking about it. In, in, in maybe yeah, that third because like when I hear third eye or pineal gland or whatever the fuck this this thing people yeah. talk about here, I kind of go well, is it an eye? Don't you you know? But visualization, I can understand. Yeah, so know. it's really just a matter of language. Mm. You, you know, so if you're lo- looking at it in a kind of Western psychological psychology point of view it might be visualization or sports kind of performance visualization yeah if you're looking at it from a yoga view it would be a third eye chakra yeah okay, you know so but they're kind of i think they're probably looking at the same thing so so mm-hmm. that was always that was always in the background um and so it's kind of and for me being a young man martial arts you know dad was always in the martial arts and for me the kind of the, this idea of <clears throat> the the kind of deeper mind and martial arts and those things were very much connected. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, in my, my early 20s then, I had stopped playing basketball and taken back up with lots of martial arts. Right. And I was fighting a lot. You know, um, this is the early days before mixed martial arts, but still kind of full contact fighting, really kind of, um, not extreme, but the ultimate test of, of yourself in martial arts. Yeah. So I was fighting in, um, in Liverpool, I remember, at the British Open. And, you know, I won a couple of fights, I lost the fight, but I came back and I was in bits, you know, mm. probably a broken nose that never got fixed properly, um, bruised, battered. Jesus and um, I remember coming back and I actually felt broken, not just physically broken, I kind of felt broken. And and there, there was mom and dad the whole time and they had been kind of there supporting me. And it wasn't until I kind of felt like that, that I turned to mom and, and um, I said, look, I, I don't really know what your healing stuff is, but can you do something? You yeah. know? So I think I went over to the mom and dad's house maybe every day for maybe two or three weeks. Um, I got healing and herbs. And at the end of it, I felt much better. And I mm. thought to myself, Jesus, this is really practical. I don't understand yeah. it, but this is really practical. So it wasn't a fi- it obviously it wasn't just uh, broken my nose and I need to recover from breaking my nose. It was obviously a mental sort of a feeling. Yeah, it was, and I think a it was, spirit maybe. Yeah, it was at a time when I was really searching. You know, mm. when I gave up basketball, um, basketball had been my life, and I gave up basketball because it was a sport. I realized it was a sport. It wasn't answering any of the big questions I had. You know, so the first step out of basketball was into martial arts, which can yeah. answer those questions for you. Um, so when I kind of at the end of the big tournament in Liverpool, I came back and that was the thing that turned it then. You know, mm. Then it was like, because I, I kind of like exploring these new things and then it was like, well, I need to understand what just happened to me there yeah. and see how practical it was. Because you're right, it wasn't just a physical thing because you're kind of traumatized when you're like there was three fights in a day, yeah. you know, which is a lot, you know, full contact stuff. So. And you're beaten, is it? Like, is Absolutely. That, so it's so is that like, the kind of heartbroken thing, you know, like uh, Conor McGregor, we won't get into, um, we can later, but... Uh, he's a great he, man. He, yeah, I think he's, he's putting a few things up his nose these days. Isn't it? <laughs> Fists, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, when he lost to somebody, you could see, you know that feeling if you have a fight in the schoolyard after the roar of the fight, you do feel so vulnerable yes. and lost. And if you're Raw. beaten... I don't know. Like, if you're beaten, then does it does it feel even way worse? You've been beaten down. That yeah, it's it's a very. It, to me, fighting is is like, and this is probably why it's called ultimate fighting championship. It, to me, fighting is the ultimate competition because yeah. you when you when the referee looks at your opponent and looks at you and says, "Okay, you ready, ready," and and you start to fight, you immediately know it's like truth you immediately know if this person is better than you yeah okay so you ma- immediately know do you you mean because like you're you're a whole let's say you're grabbing them it's like a strange dance you get a feel for their body you get yeah. a feel for their strength for their mentality for their aggression and immediately you know where in the hierarchy you are you're okay. up here or you're down there right well in tumbling basketball, then yeah yeah so within basketball you could convince yourself otherwise you could mm. say oh well i'm having an off day i'm not shooting that well but I'd be usually better than this person. Yeah. But like when you're when you're locked in this competition, and I love the original definition of competition, which is to strive together. You know, yeah. and it, when that's what fighting is like for, was for me is that you, you're actually learn about yourself with this other person. They're nearly irrelevant, but you're mm. kind of, but you know immediately what's going on. You know, yeah, so okay. so you're kind of so humbled by it. 
but still at the end of it there's like this strange even when Conor McGregor was beaten that time by Nate Diaz you see it at the end of it there's nearly like this survivor's it's not survivor's guilt it's survivor connection that you went through this battle with each other mm. and you sur- both survived you're both alive yeah. and you have this strange connection with that person yeah. you know so but so then they go off and I go in, in Liverpool he went off to the, to the final I was beating the semi-final and I go into the kind of medical area and they're checking up on me and he's there as well and he's going on to fight but there is there is that there's something there's a physical defeat but there's another kind of defeat going on but for me everyone's experience is different what they bring to it is different Mm. so for me it was kind of I was after this truth I was after this idea of what 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 is this experience about this experience you know and for me this this yeah so for me fighting was the first real time where I was absolutely, absolutely 100% in the moment. Yeah. And so that again got me thinking. So when I was losing, to me, losing was just like, I didn't care if I won or lost. It mm. was just this, I was trying, I was getting closer to this understanding of what, who I was. Yeah. So, so there, there is that, but, you know, so, but there's a limit to, for me, there was a limit to that. Mm. Um, I came home, mom was showing me kind of you know her training and, and how that worked and there was still a little bit of me that had to continue to fight for a while there was still something in there it was like therapy kind of yeah that needed to come out through the violence through, mm. through the competition um but it had kind of changed you know early 20s kind of changed i was thinking okay i want to go and learn about how to heal myself mm. Um, but there was still, I still had some fights left, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but it, it was kind of, it was winding itself down because I kind of felt if there was a little bit of darkness in here, um, it wouldn't take that long to kind of get that out. Yeah. And for me, that was the process of, of training for a fight, sharpening the mind. Um, and then, you know, I'm not, you know, some people, I say Conor McGregor. He's yeah. like a. I would view him as like an old world samurai. He's built to fight. Yeah. Okay. M- the majority of people that I've met who would fight aren't like that. They're people who would, you know, they they enjoy to a point, but there's still this horrific process of getting ready to go and fight. Yeah. That's really, um, for most people, it's a very difficult process. Yeah. And that's a terrifying process, you know. So I wasn't like a Conor McGregor. I wasn't a person who was fighting just because you love fighting yeah i was doing it for this kind of this process of of kind of meaning so the so getting from kind of your normal state to preparing to fight yeah was just horrific you know and then when you when you're walking out onto the mats say it wasn't a ring back then onto the mats and there's in say liverpool there's hundreds of people around here and your leisure center there's hundreds of people up there and it's just you walking out like there's no feeling like it yeah. so you're you're terrified but you are just a hundred percent alive you're in yeah wow but it's not sustainable though mm. you know for me it was is it when you, that me. aliveness is it is it pure adrenaline is it is what is it exactly? yeah I'd, I'd say that's what it is now knowing more survival almost it's so so yeah. it is fight or flight yeah but flight is not an option so yeah. You know, so you, so, so you kind of want, and you, but you do kind of want, you know. There is still that little, like we were saying, that little bit of you that's saying, "Don't get into the ice bath." That little bit of you saying, "Don't go out and fight," except yeah. it's screaming in your ear, you know. Because he would describe it as uh, McGregor would describe it as that's where he becomes alive. Yeah, and yeah. that's why I think, you know, as a person who's who has followed martial arts mixed martial arts and UFCs right from the beginning I was a teenager in America when it started I remember watching it live he's unique in that way yeah that for him describing himself as coming alive in there for most people it's her, it's a horrific process and the, the joy is when it finishes you win you yeah. lose and that's why I think he's like um, like an old school samurai or something in one in a million this person is built to fight that's yeah. all they want you know yeah. for everyone else Yes, your job might be a samurai to fight, but you're still nervous. You still don't prefer not to do it. Yeah. But you go through it because, you know, whatever your motivation is. And, and I think that's what makes him kind of unique is that yeah. he, if there was no cameras on, if there was no million, you know, it wasn't big contracts, he'd still he would do still it. do it. He'd still do it, Jesus. Yeah, and yeah, the majority yeah. of people, you know, if I didn't have to go, if I didn't feel I had to go through that to kind of learn more about myself, 
I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, well, that know? was a tougher path. Like some, yeah, people, so, just, some people do meditation, you go in and get your head boxed. Yeah, off, so yeah. as part of that then, as you said, I was then studying meditation. I was kind of, I was kind of going down the eastern route first because you know martial arts is kind yeah. of t- closely tied to the east. Well, was that born out of though a bit of um, you 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 can't have been in a place where life is just spectacular. I love everything and everything's amazing. You know, for you to for to to be seeking through the fight you know, through meditation, you were looking for something like. Do you mm. know what you were looking for? I knew when I stopped playing basketball like my lo- my life was dedicated to basketball yeah and I think it was quite a surprise to everyone around me when I stopped playing yeah like I pl- stopped playing when I was in early 20s and was on the Irish senior team I think I might have been the youngest uh, Irish player on the Irish senior team at the time And but internally I was looking for answers yeah you know, internally I was thinking to myself uh, I'm, you know maybe it's just where I was built I, I just want to know who, firstly who I was you know yeah. what what is this thing yeah you know? and then and, which I still haven't figured out yeah and then how does it relate to this experience yeah so those things were starting to kind of torture me a little bit inside as mm. I was playing basketball mm. but then I realised that basketball at the time I felt couldn't provide me with those answers mm. so for people on the outside looking it m- might have been a shock for me all of a sudden to drop basketball just like yeah but internally I suppose since I was a teenager these questions have been becoming louder and louder and I've been getting closer to a point where I thought to myself I need to find something else to answer these questions so, right. so that's where the, you know if we're talking about a kind of a torment or a, a place a difficult place to come from in order to go into the fighting and to kind of look for it that way that's what was kind of pushing me yeah okay that's and it was, I had done I had done karate when I was younger with dad so it was like it was like a natural step so let's say basketball finishes on the sand in this kind of precipice and it's like, okay, where do I go next for these answers? Mm. There was martial arts over there. I'd kind of been there before and off I went to that kind of route right. then. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, so with that comes Eastern philosophy, meditation, Buddhism, Taoism, okay. you know, and you kind of uh, eventually yoga, you know, so you're kind of taking a, a route around the East, Eastern yeah, philosophies yeah. and then, uh, then eventually back down to... Uh, you know native traditional kind of philosophies here in ireland and, you mm. know, the plants we have here and, and well that, so that that's interesting then so but obviously in a way you didn't find um what you were looking for or maybe you found bits and pieces along the way but you were still uh, yeah what came that you came back down into irish plants and irish ways and maybe irish, irish traditions yeah um which is kind of nice. You don't really hear about Irish yeah, traditions. Yeah, I, I at suppose all. at the time we were myself and Josie, my wife, we were living in London, mm. and I was training with the Shaolin monks there. And um, Th- this was martial arts. You were training yeah. with these guys, okay? Right. Yeah. So we lived up in Kentish Town, and they 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 had the temple in China, and they sent over Shifu Yanzi, this amazing character, to set up a, a, a temple in London. So mm. we d- we moved near the temple so I could train there. Yeah. Um. So I'd get up at half five or whatever it was run up to the temple, train there, run back, go to work. Yeah. So is your wife into this sort of stuff? She's a very different person. She's the <laughs> complete opposite. So, you know, so she, Josie's brilliant. She's very supportive and she has a good appreciation of it. But she's very different though. You know, yeah. we're like chalk and cheese in lots of ways. And does she, but does she get the thing of ever, um, oh, there's something new now. Is that this one? I think no, maybe at one point, that? but she's so supportive now. We've known each other for so long that uh, it's just kind of second nature, you yeah. know. We're in it to the end. Now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's done. Um, so, but training with the monks was was a great experience. So, as I was learning, say the Eastern different Eastern disciplines, each one was changing me. You mm. know, so let's say the process of learning how to fight from the monks was incredible. You yeah, know? and what I loved about that was you were learning how to fight, but it was always steeped in um, Buddhism. Yeah. Okay. So they were kind of saying to us, which is true, you learn how to fight, so you never have to fight. Yeah. You know, so in practical terms, you're out in town, uh, somebody's acting the maggot or whatever it is, you don't feel like, you don't feel anything inside you that has to prove themselves. Mm. Because, you know, and this is the second thing they used to say to us, that no one ever wins a fight, really. Mm. Even if you beat somebody up, you actually lose, you know, because you're doing, you know, you don't want to do that, you know, so, yeah. so it was kind of, you're breaking somebody. Yeah, in a, yeah. in a way, you're breaking yourself because yeah. it, it, you know, that's not the point. The point is to kind of 
you learn how to fight so if you're forced to fight you can, you can defend yourself and you can run away yeah. you know but so for me that was brilliant to learn and so they brought in um, meditation for okay. me and qigong you know because you have to be and this is kind of the first part of the using breath yeah so you have to use the qigong exercises to kind of build your strength up from the inside out right so it wasn't just muscles growing because you're running up primrose hill yeah it's kind of very interesting i'm going to just flick this here it's really it's not just um it's not just physical it's mental and spiritual it's absolutely it's not physical yes yeah, it's just you know, it's, it's a combination but it, for what started out for me as a holistic physical maybe, journey, yeah. and the monks started to bring in the other parts of it um so at each stage of that i was i was changing so much mm. And the things that I had learned from it were actually kind of have stayed with me the whole time. Yeah, okay. So I kind of progressed then through, say, uh, the Eastern philosophies, then in through yoga. Um, so you're happier in yourself, though, with or having all that stuff oh, in your life. Amazing. Yeah. Because really what, what it's given me now is, yeah, it's given me lots of little tools along the way. Yeah. So if, so, if somebody comes to me now and they have, um, say, something that they're struggling with, I can draw on all that experience and maybe there's a breathing technique from then or a meditation technique from that period that I can give them some herbs and talk about that bit of it and say, look, here's a little exercise you should do as well, if, you know, if they're stressed out. Or okay, so, so would you came back, you came back from um, London and you had learned all this stuff from the Shaolin monks. These are the guys who do this amazing stuff, like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, amazing. You, can you do this, that sort of stuff? <laughs> What we really struggled with is that you know when you when I met the monks, it's real soft sort of art. Well, it, it is yeah. and it isn't. There's yeah. both sides. There's kind of the qigong would be the soft part, you know, yeah. which would be this so sort of kind of internal martial arts, and then the external was the fighting part, you know. So and yeah. there were, there were this kind of beautiful combination of of both as as people. There was Shifu Yanzi who was the top um, monk in the temple, and then there was Shifu Yan Li who was kind of like um, his assistant. And they had both at very different paths to Shaolin Temple in China. Um, and Shifu Yanzi was, um, you know, arguably one of the best. San Shao is the national sport in China. It's like mixed martial arts. Mm. One of the best San Shao fighters ever. Okay. Know? And and his specialty was kind of like iron fist and iron and foot, you know. So, like, they'd be training their hands. And then Shifu Yanli, he was a, he was a very different character. Uh, small, lots of muscles, scars all over his head. You know, but the combination of them kind of taught you very, very kind of different things, you know. But, okay. Um, but obviously introduced this idea of using the breath and that kind of power your body. Like, yeah. this, um, that must have been, the, it's, you know, because before Wim Hof, which we will we'll get to, I, I didn't realise this idea that a breath, you know, they're always saying, you go, oh, breathe in, breathe out. And you're, I'd be kind of, oh, geez. <clears throat> and not really getting where they were you know that it might have anything to do with your body but obviously this was kind of a teaching you would know actually your breath you know and focus to a part of your body can do something yes is, is that it like? that is absolutely it so through qigong which is kind of the the internal martial art it was it was using breath and motion breath mm. and movement to generate very like wim hof and very like pranayama in, in yoga to generate uh, strength internally, specifically on the different organs, mm. to generate energy and, and better immunity. And now they, and so that would be kind of how you would use it for everyday life. But then the thing is to see Shell and monks doing it and, and you know, they have these big shows that go around the world breaking lead pipes on their heads. Yeah. And all. That's the kind of, that's the Hollywood end of, of Qigong where yeah. you could use, you could develop Qigong to kind of strengthen your head and have kind of like iron head technique or something. And the end result of that is that you can break a lead pipe on your head. Yeah. But that's okay. just to show you, that's to get people's attention. Yeah. The real part of it is everyone can use it every day just to feel better. Yeah. Okay. So he used to relate it back to Wim Hof. So Wim Hof obviously holds... Well, I'm, I'm, I don't normally do linear, but I'm very, so curious that I want to do linear. You, you, you learned this and then you came back to Ireland and then you kind of... 
said about the herbs and yeah. the, did, were they kind of a continuous thing because your mum and you were learning about those or how did that happen and then obviously Wim Hof came in the breathing was continuous but you discovered breathing so try we'll, we'll so go that way piece it all together yeah so when when I was in London learning from the from the lads up in Sheldon Temple yeah it started to dawn on me that I had gone through lots of these different philosophies from the east and mm. I started to think to myself well, what about what about Ireland like, yeah you know we, we have such amazing culture and tradition so you know what what things were we healing ourselves with yeah so so mom had kind of gone down that route so i kind of knew so i started talking to her and um there was two great teachers from that that came into my life then so i had gina mcgarry who's a, a renowned herbalist in Mongar. okay so she was in the irish tradition so i started to go to her to learn and then coach Brannigan. so in, she's actually teaching you this yeah, stuff in yeah, gory yeah would be more on the, on the healing traditions in, right. in Ireland. So um, I was in London at the time, flying back, ironically, back to Ireland to learn from these two people while living in, in London. Yeah. Um, so then eventually myself and Josie decided that we, you know, it was time to go back to home. Yeah. Um, so I kind of c- continued on these kind of, they are connected, the herbs and the kind of healing signs yeah. are, are very much connected, but people tend to kind of just go one path or the other. Um, so I trained with both of them for st- I'm still kind of I kind of like working with them now but 10 years maybe 10 years wow concurrently yeah um, and and that was and that was how the kind of that's how the the herbs came into it and that's how the, um, the kind of the, the healing side as well came into it because mm. I was just fascinated you know as yeah. I was, we were talking before and I was saying I think questions like how did our how did our grandparents and great grandparents and their great grandparents how did they keep themselves healthy yeah without without the VHI clinic without uh, fruit from all over the world and superfoods you know so when I started to realize is that there's superfoods that grow in your garden here you know, yes talk to me a little bit about this because obviously you'd hear about years ago you know you'd say if you, if you got stung by a nettle you'd, you'd get a, a doctor dock some leaf, yeah. dock leaf and that would and I don't know whether that was just part of, you know, was at least to do something, then the yeah. pain might go away. But yeah, talk to me a little bit about those, because obviously, and we, when we spoke on the phone the very first time, obviously plants, whether you're going to go all the way to psychedelic plants or you go to cannabis or you go to foods that we eat or, you know, herbs, uh, we're eating plants all the time, which yeah. is kind of a good way to yeah. that we're not eating um, ayahuasca and mushrooms all the time. But, um, but we are eating... Um, consuming them all the time but and obviously they have an impact in our body but subtly we don't recognize it or you know but obviously with what you're talking about talk to me a little bit anyway about the, the herbs no but it's a good have point a healing. because you know we use plants all the time a good point. I, 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 yeah, went, I went around the house the point you were, were making was that in our everyday life when we do a shop in, in wherever it is tesco yeah. wherever it is we come home a lot of the stuff we buy is plant-based mm. so we use plants all the time without knowing it really to keep yeah. ourselves healthy so what but in this case we might be buying plants as in you know vegetables or fruit or yeah. even you know um not milk but you know juices and things like that we're already using that to keep ourselves healthy mm. what i was interested in knowing is what is growing out there yeah wild is also good for us to take and use yeah so that kind of fascinated me so that's really that's really where I kind of started from, and and you know all those years later now, when I'm walking around, all over Dublin or wherever I am, there's plants growing all around us that we can use. For example, so nettles. We know nettles. Yeah. You know nettles are bursting full of vitamins and minerals, folic acids, and all. It's it's like a, a an all over body tonic. It's probably one of the the best things you could consume. Now that's mental. Yeah. So, but if you look back. I'd say, where are your grandparents from? Uh, Clonus and somewhere in the Midlands. Right. I would say that if your grandparents had some of their old recipe books from their parents or their, old, or their grandparents, there would be recipes in there using nettles. Nettles, yeah. nettle and potato soup, you know, and, and things like that. And dandelion leaf. You know, so these things have been used 
uh, for ages. You know, it's just that they've kind of fallen out of fashion. And but the, the skeptic, obviously, you're not the skeptic, but you, you, your instant thing is going, ah, well, where? I mean, how, how is this? how is it possible that it, how can you prove it or whatever like you know but talk to me about so the nettles in particular so there's lots of like there is lots of scientific proof that they contain these vit- vitamins and minerals okay um, I suppose why aren't they as popular why aren't they in the mainstream is because there's no money to be made on them yeah you know like once you have the knowledge that you can go and take nettles for overall kind of health that you can take dandelion, which is an ad- adaptogen, which actually helps the hormones in your body balance out. Yeah, it's also brilliant for your entire digestive system. So anybody that has any of those problems can use dandelion leaf. If you know that you can go out and take them from your garden, cut them up, put boiling water on them, and drink them the next day to help you feel better, you know, there's not much profit to be made in that. Yeah, that's you know, really interesting. So yeah. how do we know about goji berries, mm. or how do we know about cacao nibs, or how you know because there's this huge, and I use them all, but like we know about them because there's this machine that markets them to us yeah. and makes money off us. You know, yeah. so really herbs, especially in Ireland, it, it's called the people's medicine. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of it's empowering people to use the stuff that grows around them all the time because we didn't always import stuff to make us healthy. Yeah, that's we really, actually, really we actually kind of use the stuff around us all the time to make us healthy. So yeah. Um, it's really interesting. I mean, it, of course. I mean, if and the reality is that if if a new product um, came in from somewhere, say it came in from America and it was nettled something, yeah, and the Americans said it was great, or some <laughs> real health guru said it was great, we'd all be going, oh, geez, we need to get the new nettle two point two or whatever. We need to get those dandelion leaves. Yeah, we need to get them yeah. from Siberia, yeah. even though we can pick Have them here. Them in, yeah. <laughs> And we, and we probably would buy them as opposed yeah. to going out to our back garden to get them. you know and that's I think that's what, what was very interesting to me is that this kind of idea of empowering people so you know and when I talk to people and people come to me for, for help it's often kind of trying to show them that we do have lots of options open to us to do this kind mm. of stuff so it, it, there is an element of teaching people what plants that grow wild in their own garden that they can use to keep themselves healthy before they get sick you know? yeah and then when we were at our swim today, you, we had sage and honey tea. Yeah, it was lovely. Um, yeah. You know, but that's, um, there are a few great things like that and thyme and a few things like that that can actually help a person recover from a cold or flu really quickly. Mm. And they would be old recipes. You know, yeah. they would be they would be nothing new to us, but I suppose some of us have been keeping an eye on them, Not, but they're not in fashion. Oh, well, they're totally know. not like. I mean, my mother would have said, you know, honey and garlic or whatever it was but to recover... Of- brilliant for like coughs or anything like that yeah you know? sore throats now it's disgusting sucking on a clove of garlic but it, it does is, yeah. the job you know yeah yeah and I suppose it, it, the proof is in the the uh, trying but obviously then you you would get people who come to you and you might say, it's, would you cook up something for them or? so the, the process really what we know about ourselves is that it has to be convenient yeah you know so say for me every morning I'd go out to the garden and I would pick different herbs from the, or plants from the garden that are grown mm. wild and make pot, a pot of tea for myself for that day depending okay. on what I need you know? yeah. but n- not everyone's going to do that Every, no. people want something really quick so for, for clients that would come to me I would do all the work yeah. you know, so we'd go through how they're feeling and look at them as a whole person and try and figure out you know, how they're feeling but what's the root cause of it and trying to figure out how do we, how do we help them there and I would kind of make the uh, herbs and then I would d- distill them and make them. And then the next day they can come and collect them and you okay. get them in a little bottle. It's a tincture. Yeah. So it's all the herbal goodness with a little bit of vodka as a preservative. And then they just have a couple of spoonfuls of that every day for 10 okay. minutes or something. So I could. It's so almost witch it. doctory now. It's, it's a little <laughs> bit, a little bit, but I love that. Like, But it's almost that preparation that you're going away. So you're obviously... Do you energetically get vibes from people that come in? Can you feel like if you're very much in touch with energy work and healing, you must get a sense of somebody's the, what's coming from their body, you know, or do you project? You know what I mean by that? Like, can you get do you get that sense? Suppose, of what, do you're obviously chatting to them and then you say, right, well, then I'm going to give them this, 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 you know, a drop of this. And, uh, you know, so what we do is when someone comes in for herbs is that we go through a kind of a pretty long list of questions about people, about yeah. their life. You know? Yeah. And we talk about 
their their health we talk about how they eat you know everything how they mm. sleep their relationships and basically try to build up this kind of rounded picture of the person and within that process you can very quickly tell um what, what type of person is it? you know okay. for, for instance where they're at yeah for instance lots of people lots of people struggle with stress stress of modern life is, yeah you know is, is killing people yeah so in the course of talking to somebody through all these questions you, you'd start to see that stress might be one of the big things so that, but they mightn't come in and say stress is killing me yeah you won't, they won't know that yeah but by talking them through their all their lifestyle and everything you'll get to that point and then you'll know okay we need to add in some chamomile some oat straw some, some of these beautiful nervine herbs which 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 calm the nervous system down and you can yeah. feel it like you take mm. it and you can feel the nervous system which is kind of jangled from from stress and it's kind of coated and, and kind of calmed down you know so mm. so oftentimes stress is one of the big things and so so stress leads to inflammation inflammation leads to disease you know so yeah. so it's kind of if you can kind of get to the stress but it's not only the herbs you know because the stress could be other th- other things in their life and they have to learn and this is where the other techniques from say qigong or meditation could co- 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 come in but they might need to combine a little bit of meditation and some herbs yeah well so in a way if you're talking about the nervous system and the nervous system is like it sounds it's the central system that operates everything and if that's gone haywire if that's not working as it should be then nothing the thinking process isn't going to hurt the body the energy the le- you know everything is not going to be working so what you're saying you, through the herbs maybe it it you can feel see the difference uh, how they impact somebody's yeah. nervous system and but then in terms of the whole body breathing will make a difference too that, yeah you know, breathing and then obviously you went from there on to Wim Hof yeah so the breathing from the very beginning of when I was trying to figure this out for myself yeah the breathing is the is the link between it all hmm. from qigong breathing to meditation to pranayama breathing to Wim Hof you know so in in the work as a herbalist and, and as a healer teaching people to breathe even very simply is key to them getting better mm. because the majority of us walk through life and our breathing is quite shallow yeah and at the worst it's actually less than shallow it's kind of it's nearly non-existent mm. you know so and so even just that is putting the body the chemistry in the body is way out of balance because of that yeah so even if somebody comes in and they're massively stressed there's herbs that you can give them that will take the body take the physical body down a few gears yeah and then the breathing even simple breathing will take will take the chemistry of the body plus the mind the mind will follow the breathing and the yeah, chemistry okay and it will take the mind down a few gears as well and then it's and then the person has a little bit of space then that they can then they can make it a few little changes that they might need to make you yeah know, but, but if somebody is extraordinarily stressed you're trying to get them just a few gears below and then maybe a few gears below that again before they actually have to make any decisions you know because people are yeah very very stressed so, so then obviously um uh, we'll have to do another one on Wim Hof but um <laughs> uh, so obviously Wim Hof in a way is another string to your bow another tool to be able to help yeah. people with and obviously you found great um use but the, uh, so I might just park that question for yep. just a second the other thought I had was really was this idea of Oh, what are we all, you know, there's so many things in terms of self-help books, yoga, physical, mental, like whether it's pharmaceutical or natural. Yeah. But there's so many things like all for us just to try and fucking live. Mm. You know, what the fuck like is going on? You know, when you think about it, like there's, there's countless things to try and calm this nervous system down, try and get the person to be OK with existing. Yeah. What's that about, like? If you, to, you know what I mean? I know that's the eternal kind of thing that's going on, but I mean, it's. See, I used to think that it was just modern life that mm. kind of um, hit people with barrages of different things all the time mm. and caused them to be out of balance and stressed. And but I actually think that's probably always the human condition. I think yeah. it's probably just nowadays it's our iPhone binging all the time. That's the kind of latest thing that's kind of causing it. But before that, it might have been other things. But mm. I think it is. I think it is part of the human condition for us to be under different types of stress. Yeah. And I think it, f- for me, what I can see in people is it's just giving them that one tool 
because everyone out of all the things you might learn this tool might be perfect for that person mm. but not for the next person so it's kind of finding that daily practice whatever that is walking barefoot in your garden even yeah. you know or going for a swim or taking herbs or both mm. it's trying to find that one thing that you that you that you can connect with that you understand and it feels good for you and then it's about repeatedly doing it yeah because the the, the barrage of stress that's repeated yeah. you know every day some even if you hide away in a cave every day something or you know eventually trouble is going to find you you know mm. so it's kind of having that one thing in your back pocket that tool or that practice that allows you to and that's your little escape from you know from the stress and that allows you to 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 build up your health and your stamina so when the stress happens or when the grief happens or mm. when it happens you already have this kind of bank of health and, and kind of happiness that you kind of that that can repel that a little bit yeah and that's the kind of really interesting thing i suppose is this natural power that uh, this natural raw real energy that seems to come from the wim Hof. now I, it's not that i'm a cynic i want everything to be true like i love fuck love anything that has magical or unknown qualities that you know are dismissed and actually on discovery you find out something about them i love that but the, the wim hof is really clear in terms of a natural it awakens some sort of a natural energy yeah doesn't it i mean there's, there's no doubt i've done it. nine weeks but you're about to become a teacher yeah in it. there's no yeah. doubt like from all my experience that i've, that I've described today i remember sitting down it was just a while ago maybe a year or so ago really cold it was really you know, you know uh, dark and um, you know I was quite run down and tired as lunch and new business and doing all these kind of things Mind it, Mike, sorry, sorry. Um, and Josie my, my wife her brother-in-law had died and she was really suffering from grief and I had seen Wim Hof on Joe Rogan and I was mm. really I was like, kind of really intrigued by it so I remember sitting in the trying to print out the manual. We had just signed up for the ten week course, and we hadn't got time to do it that day. But I just said I'll have a little look at the video and start the breathing. Given that I have so much experience with breathing, within about five breaths, I paused it and shouted to Joseph in the kitchen, "This is incredible!" <laughs> <laughs> because right. having been through so much training with breathing, I had never come across something like this, and I'd never come across yeah. something like this that nearly immediately made me feel different yeah okay so that was for me the point when i thought to myself okay this is something i wouldn't say new because it's combining things that have, we, we know already but a new combination and, mm. and and so effective i've never seen anything so immediately effective so so within 30 breaths 30 big breaths yeah and then the um, breathing out and holding that yeah that experience it, it, so we know scientifically that it changes the chemistry in the brain we know yeah. that it changes the chemistry yeah in the that's body. been proven yeah so all that's got there's no speculation about that all that's been proven it reduces inflammation reduces stress all that is proven but to feel it is to understand it you know yeah. you do it and then you think to yourself whoa I feel so different because of this mm. you know and you it's know, almost like I mean uh, it is almost like a pump to the system this the yeah and that you're you, uh, you're building in this um, I'm probably doing the shallow there but you're, you, you're 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 pumping the body and I don't know what's happening though. do you know what's happening kind of in in language for me the feeling of it is I'm pumping my body like I'm pumping up bed and I feel energised yeah. from it what, what is what is actually happening though? so do you know? so what's happening there is there's so much that's going on right. there um, but one of the ways to I'll try to describe it in you know without taking 25 minutes yeah. one of the ways to describe it is that I used to think that it was just that you're filling your body with oxygen okay and so it's not only filling your body like the lungs are like a channel so the oxygen is getting down through the lungs into the blood into the tissue down into the cells okay and when it gets down into the cells the mitochondria in the cell are like little engines for energy mm -hmm. so they're getting as much as, of the oxygen as they need so they're all firing up so you're actually you're energizing your body right that's happening Okay. But what I've learned more recently is that it's actually also that the exhale is getting rid of all the carbon dioxide. Okay. You know, so you're getting rid of so much of that that your body is kind of, it's your body is filling with oxygen, getting rid of all the other stuff. You know, and it's in this kind of combination that we're taking our body from, we're taking our body 
through a whole spectrum of experiences. Mm -hmm. Oxygen and the opposite, you know, retaining breath, lots of breaths, cold and warm. And by taking the body and all the systems through this spectrum of, of action, we then let it settle at its optimum level then at its balance, you know, and that's really, there's lots of benefits, but that's the one thing that really struck me is that you're kind of, your experience of the big breaths and then we're, we're taking it to the body to the extremes of what it can do. And when it goes to the extremes, it then settles naturally at the best place for itself. Yeah. And so, so like when I did the first, before I did it, I did the push up. So I saw the push up video. So I did 15 push ups when I tried to do normal push ups without doing any of this breathing exercises. And then the very first time I went from 15 to 30. Wow. Now in that 15 to 30, it was a totally different feeling even doing the push ups. Like it's like as it, uh, Do you want to explain to people what, what the exercise is like? Um, so basically it's you 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 do explain the part about the breeze. You breathe thirty times in and out yeah. and then at the end of it you hold your breath and you go down and do your push ups. So it's you, you, it's in that like all I can do is describe how I felt. It's uh, push ups were easy. Yeah. And I was able to do thirty. Yeah. Now I can't tell you the why they yeah. were easy, but they were easy. So so for me that was one of, so for me there's lots of great things about the Wim Hof method. Yeah. One of them is that it's kind of built that you prove it to yourself. Yeah, that's kind of like that Shaolin Mun thing of yeah. breaking something with your head, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So 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 myself and Josie started. Her back was really sore and all these kind of things. And when we started, she couldn't she couldn't do one press up. Yeah. So within maybe a week, she was doing four. Within a couple of weeks, she was up to about twenty press ups, which is which is nearly like a miracle. Yeah. You know, given that she couldn't even do one at the start. Yeah. And so so what's happening there is that when if we're doing press ups, usually ah. Uh, you know the body's under such strain and it, the the chemistry is becoming really acidic you know yeah. so the more acidic becomes and any athlete knows this you know for the lactic acid in your body after your training you're all stiff mm. so when we're putting pressure on our body like stress from jobs or stress from bad food or stress from push-ups our body is becoming more acidic so it's getting hard to push and hard to push and it feels like such effort when we do the breathing the body is becoming alkaline it's becoming really balanced and yeah. when we're doing the retention so we're not breathing the body is it's nearly like it's all loose and free there's no acid in it so you can theoretically keep doing the press-ups for longer and longer because your yeah. body's not getting full of acid you know so the the muscles aren't getting sore so there was yourself doing up to 30 there was Josie going from none to 20 and so I do runs. I can get to get to 50 now maybe 55 now at the, like if you were to say to somebody hold your breath get down there and do 50 press ups they would say that is impossible that's impossible do. yeah we see that's the beauty of the way Wim Hof and his team have kind of created the method to deal with our cynical mind yeah is that you prove it to yourself all the time and I just flip this here um, but the thing I suppose with it is then so one is then you prove that and that gives you the kind of feeling of right well I'm going to go on to the next level and then you do the exercise but obviously it's the yeah let's talk about the cold right cold therapy um anybody who ever has gone into a cold shower will, will know that you, you get some sort of an energetic yeah. feeling afterwards but i used to think that that feeling was well you're in pain and now you're out of the pain so you're a little bit happy about yeah. being out of pain but it's a it's a bit more than that it's a yeah. good bit more than yeah. that what is happening there yeah there's lots of again with, with each stage of this the breathing and then there's the kind of mindset and and, and the the cold there's so many things going on mm. um, but you know the, the kind of the interesting part about the cold is there's a few things we'll talk about so if you're practicing your breathing right your normal breathing sitting at home and you have your big breaths and your, your exhalations you're not under stress doing that you know you're learning how to do it mm. you know so you're learning the skill of being able to breathe like that but let's say in the cold like today when we got to the sea yeah all of a sudden now you're under extreme stress mm. so can you still breathe and relax in the extreme stress? Mm. So the process of every day doing a little cold shower and breathing, on that level, you are learning how to deal with extreme stress. Yeah. So the rest of your day, if a person is under stress, whatever it is, loads of children, loads of work, they know that they can deal with it because they can breathe. If they can, you can breathe in the cold, you can breathe. So in one way, it's like, testing your breathing 
that that's, yeah. that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that it is also because you're doing it on an extreme. It is like uh, it's like a weight training session for all the blood vessels and all the kind of all the support system around the heart. You know, so yeah. your cardiovascular. Is it a workout fitness. for that, like? Because it's he a workout say, for your nervous system. Yeah. Because and, and your respiratory system. Is everything. Yeah. yeah. So that's so. He the, said you'd be able to run with a battery, but I haven't tried it now. So but the but you, and jog you, and everything would be stronger. Because think of it, though, like normal breathing is done in these type of circumstances. But yeah. when you get in that water, you're trying to breathe normally, and you're you're getting stronger. Yeah. That's where the stronger bit comes. But then again, it's all back to chemistry. We we were talking about earlier. No matter what mood you're in, no matter how the chemistry of your body is beforehand, when you get into the cold, it changes. And that's, I suppose, why I have been fascinated by the whole thing. Um, like he, I, uh, mo, he, he gives a very like Wim Hof. I should probably say the Wim Hof a bit late now and the whole thing. But Wim Hof is this Dutch guy who's developed this cold therapy combined with breathing and exercising that has had transformative effects on people on the yeah. boat it's been proven he's gone into hospitals and had studies scientific studies done on him but he's broken multiple world records and his it's it's essentially all about developing this natural energy a natural real energy that's within everybody and you hear those words and you say well it's not really going to apply to me but really simple of getting into a cold shower and coming out of it you talked about it there but it is absolutely transformative no matter how you're feeling I guarantee you, if you're feeling horribly depressed, you will not be when you come out the other side. Like yeah. I said to a mate, it's like going in like a mouse and you come out like a lion to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, yeah. Although you can't go in too brave either some mornings because no, then yeah. you'll have the opposite <laughs> effect. It'll beat you down. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you but have it, to go in with, with a kind of balanced, humble mind. Yeah, I think you do. Because yeah, you get yeah. killed then. Because I remember one day going in going, I'm well over for this and I came out and my head was almost frozen. But <laughs> it was one of those mornings. Yeah. But here's kind of uh, in a way where I want to get to like these are you have a situation say where people will um, or anybody people just want to feel better yeah right everybody just wants to go along they're going about their lives and whether it's work or relationship whatever the fuck but everybody just wants to feel better and I, uh, some people I think Eve was on and Eve, uh, Eve is a comedian and I was talking to her and yeah. she went into it, the doctor and the doctor within like 10 minutes said it sign up here get Prozac you know sign up here and get Prozac and to me it's the, it should be the last thing on the planet that is mentioned to somebody now I, I don't know I mean I'm not a doctor but to me it should be the last thing there's a multiplicity yeah. of things to discover and uncover out there that can help I would have thought yeah and these in a way whether it's the herbs or Wim Hof or the breathing these are ways that you can potentially yeah and I think they're there for for people they're empowering, hmm. you know. So let's say if somebody's going to a doctor, yeah, maybe they need that. But that, as you said, that should be the thing at the very end of the list, hmm. you know. And, and I know in places like Holland, um, they are integrating Wim Hof method into the health system in some way, you know. Yeah. So because everyone benefits, but again, it comes back to money. Everyone benefits if you can say to a patient that comes in, look, go breathe for a week, hmm. get in the cold shower, uh, combine both. And come back and tell us how you feel. Mm. And then if you're really awful, then we'll go to the next phase. You know? Yeah. But like, there's more money to be made in Prozac. Signing somebody up for than the rest of their life. Than tell them to go out and breathe and get in the shower. Yeah. You, you know, so I think there are, the, there are kind of, there are much bigger kind of contextual things going on around this kind of stuff. But um, it, it's empowering. You know, it's empowering yeah. to think that you can actually go and breathe and take these steps or, you know, take some nettle from your house and drink them. And you can actually start to, to feel better. How would I, if I, um, I'm going to give the nettles a go, how would I go about doing that now? What do I need so, to do? Um, find some nettles. Find some nettles. You know if they look like they have spikes and everything. Have yeah. a look at them. There look is, at there's them. different types of nettles. There's different, seen. but like stinging nettle here in Ireland is, you know, is, is you can find it nearly everywhere. Yeah, okay. Um, say a handful of leaves. What type of leaves? Nettle leaves. Oh, nettle leaves, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, chop them up really small yeah. put them in your teapot like you'd make normal tea fill it with boiling water yeah. and the longer you, you leave it the more goodness comes out of the nettle okay. so like you can leave it overnight would be ideal but even if you leave it 15-20 minutes you know but ideally the next day and then you drink it okay um, 
And you don't feel it immediately, though. I mean, it's it, it, like some of these things are subtle, aren't they? Or, well, what? it's not like ayahuasca where you, you know, you're going yeah. to feel it immediately. <laughs> but yeah. but your health Im- improves, you know. Like, let's say today when you drank the sage and honey tea, you, yeah. you know, you felt, you know, you were swimming as well, but you felt more comforted. Yeah, I did, you know, yeah, you, yeah. You know, and that's, that's kind of what it feels like as well. Um, it's a gentle sort of a feeling, yeah. It is, because, and because the herbs that we're talking about here they're all nourishing herbs. There's, mm. different, there's different categories of herbs. On, on the other end are heroic herbs. And they are the ones that I wouldn't use at, hardly at all, at all. And they are well, extreme herbs. You know, like, so, what, no. like plants. Like um, some plants that you would take and immediately the person would get violently ill as a way of purging, you know, if they were sick or something, you know, if they had a stomach bug. But that's not really the approach I take. You know, is yeah. we're taking a much more balanced approach. We don't want to kind of extreme like the, the brilliant one uh, has good benefits but you have to be very careful called skull cap okay so this is and it literally does so let's say a person has their mind is racing and racing and racing and they're kind of beyond something like chamomile which is kind of a softer one skull cap imagine getting a black woolly hat and putting it down over your head. That's the feeling of it. You know? Okay. It kind of like silences Is the mind. The this, yeah. Makes it kind of dark. And it, it's it's kind of like an, in an extreme case where you kind of have to just, for the person's own sake, just shut the mind down for a little yeah. bit. Now that would be a heroic herb that you wouldn't use very often. And I like the sound of that now. Yeah, so when, as part of my training, towards the end of my training, I, I spent a month taking uh, skull, because you have to get, to, you have to know the herbs really well. Yeah. Um, taking skullcap I think it was every day um, to see how, how its effects you know absolutely un- understand it and it was very interesting because let's say at the start of the process I was probably a little bit stressed from preparations for the exams all that kind of stuff so I could feel the first few days I could feel much calmer from skullcap but then when I was calm it was actually taking you below that so I could feel my brain getting slow you know yeah, because okay. I, it didn't need to calm me down I was already down here so it was taking me kind of below that you know so was that good? Not no good. no not good at all it was like it was like my brain was foggy you know it was okay. kind of taking me it was taking me too deep down into it you know so they're the kind of ones that you feel it's so it's that group of herbs the heroic ones that you would feel immediately yeah and they're not the kind of so they're so like you might you, and the skull cap grow in Ireland skull cap um, it needs a bit more sun okay. it needs a bit more sun so you can buy it in Ireland but um, but I, I'm not sure if you need a kind of um, a conservatory or something to grow it in okay right. Um, but you know I would imagine I'm not 100% sure but I would imagine say lots of the psychedelic plants would be in the heroic end of, of the spectrum yeah because you take them and immediately yeah, something's you, happening you, you, you know, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so the, the herbs we're talking about apparently yeah the herbs <laughs> we're talking about the nourishing ones have a very profound effect but it's you're not going to drink the nettles and immediately feel whoa I'm full of nettles yeah. you know? but you will feel it though you yeah, know and, and, okay. and your your mood will change your health will change and do you put a bit of honey in with that way you describe you can, making that tea you can, to make yeah. it more and what's palatable. it palatable yeah I, might, I actually might just give that a go now yeah I'm I'm sure after we'll have a look in the garden and see if we can yeah, find some nettles yeah we might actually do that um, yeah, but the, a part of it is though our palates have become um, you know generalisation but our palates have become very used to kind of very salty very sugary sweet food. that's my fucking diet now salty or sweet so right so dandelion leaf the reason it's so good for your digestion is it's really bitter yeah. you don't really as as most people don't really have bitters in their diet anymore and it's an essential part of the palate working properly and then the palate and the entire digestive system it needs bitters to yeah. kind of get it working properly yeah. uh, herb Robert is it what it's called it's kind of like nettle, but you know, I'd say nettle a little bit better. But uh, again, great overall tonic for the body, full of vit- vitamins and mineral, minerals. It's the same thing again. You leave it steep. Yep. And if you want to take the edge off the taste, a bit of honey. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's the same. Very cool. Same process for all of these. Let's see what else you have here. Yeah. Because it, it triggers off different kind of chemicals and hormones. So something like if you have a really sweet tooth, even um, let's see, can we find some in your garden? A dandelion leaf. And you and you chew it. It's so bitter, mm. but again, it is. It's bitter for a reason. It's kind of kickstarting the old digestive system to work properly. Yeah. Have a look. You can see the. Uh, see the little kind of the milk here. Yeah. So now, pop that in your mouth and, and eat that. It's nice and bitter. They're only small little leaves, so they probably won't be too bad. 
but you know mm. during the during the year when it when their leaves are really big it's, it's really not too bad bitter, you know okay so if people have now often not yourself now but if somebody is really stressed because of the adrenaline spikes all the time in their body they kind of start to crave lots of sugar mm. you know so let's say if somebody was really stressed i would have them on say some of the softer nerve beans like chamomile oat straw but i'd also have a dandelion in there as well to help them balance the hormones to bring that back down and if you're stressed your digestion probably isn't working properly mm. you know so there's kind of there's lots of kind of nice combinations you can do like that but um and they grow everywhere and here this oh, is this um one. can be called wild cabbage it's very like dandelion leaf so right. it's kind of similar dandelion but this is this is a part of the opiate family right so it's kind of so I wouldn't use this is the heroic herbs yeah. if, you're to, if you're to use the leaves of this it just dulls you you know so it's like um, and the interesting thing is this is for people with high levels of like extreme stress so you okay. just kind of like shut them down wow. this grows all over Dublin and, and what's going to be the name of it again? it's wild cabbage wild cabbage okay yeah. Jesus but it looks and this is the see to an untrained eye it has a kind of similar yellow to a dandelion and the leaves are a little bit similar yeah um, but it's purple here and it dulls you. It dulls you. So, like, so like, for some, like that's opiates, respite from the from whatever from the brain. You know, and that's you know, that's why opiates. There's such an addiction to opiates is because people are just like you just need to be dulled. You know, so this yeah. is yeah. So one of the interesting ideas about herbalism here in Ireland is that the plants you need grow around you. I always kind of had that feeling that you know they can't be a million miles away. It has to be of the earth around us what we're looking for it yeah. has to be there oh, yeah it's interesting so if, uh, if so it's small flower willow herb small flower willow herb it's yeah. a great name yeah. small flower willow herb that's should, fair that should record anyway there's sand on this okay prostate health for, for men prostate health for men um, so I, I have to get up in the middle of the night I just assumed it's an old age thing and I always have to go for a pee do you really? Yeah, I really well, that, do. That yeah. would probably help then. Oh, really? If we say that we're a part of nature, you yeah. know, we're just a part of the whole system. Yeah. So, if, you know, so it makes sense that if we're a part of the system, that the system is connected to us and it's working. So the foods that grow here are the foods that we really should be eating. Yeah, the foods and even, that are even on a kind of more micro level, like the plants that you need are probably grown all around your in your garden. There's a few magic mushrooms there. I thought that there, last yeah. time. <laughs> I don't think they're magic, actually, but um, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, Jesus. You see, it's, um, I'm conscious that we've reached an hour, which is a pity because I, I'm i definitely, we're definitely going to be chatting again. Okay. I'm pretty convinced of that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Um, so obviously you have, you have a, a practice in Dunleer. You have a Facebook page. You might as well get some of that stuff. Yeah, in there. so for um, for the healing and the herbs, traditionalirishhealing.com. Okay, yeah. And Traditional Irish Healing is on Instagram and Facebook. Very good. And for Wim Hof, it's Wim Hof Ireland on Instagram and Wim Hof Ireland on Facebook. Okay, so you have them slightly separate, even though they're in yeah, a way they're connected, but I suppose it's the brand of them. Yeah, they're, I think this has been something I've been kind of thinking a lot about. I think they're probably two different audiences at the start yeah but there's an overlap yeah okay you know some people will definitely want Wim Hof and won't want to know about traditional Irish mm. and vice versa but I think then at the core it's it's breathing it's using nature mm -hmm. the coal or herbs to kind of make you happier and stronger and, and yeah I like the, that what, is that what he says stronger happier and healthier that's what he says I think isn't that's it? What, how he describes it yeah too. okay I think that's and so you will you bring people through the course or what have you have you started teaching people yet or do you have to get your so, so i have um when we finished there was kind of different stages of instructor training so the last stage was in holland's yeah and after that we, we were given permission to start teaching on, okay. on, a, on a kind of small scale yeah and um, to prepare us for the last bit of the training which yeah, is in okay. poland now at the end of the month so i've been teaching um small groups and individuals and now hopefully uh, when I become an instructor, then we'll have kind of maybe monthly workshops in Ireland, in Dublin and around Ireland, yeah. um, that people can can come and enjoy, and then uh, probably one on one sessions as well. So that's yeah, gonna okay. that's all going to kick off in January. Fingers crossed that I pass all the exams. And yeah, run up the mountain in my shorts and get back down again. <laughs> is there a bit? That, that's what has to happen. Is it that sort of stuff? Yeah. So I've been doing lots of preparation for that. So so part of the training in Poland is. Um, examination about the kind of scientific background and all that kind of stuff right. 
Um, but then I think the culmination or as part of that, we, we go up Mount Śnieżka, I think is the highest mountain in, in Poland, and it's, we're right beside it. And you, you go up to the top and back in your shorts. Your shorts, no top on. No top on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been practicing that up and down the sugar loaf, and okay. it's really quite, uh, it's quite a, a totally different experience going up a mountain, you know, in the cold and the wind. No top on. Just a short, your shorts. You know, you feel, you feel, not that I'm a mountain climber at all, but you can feel the um, the atmosphere and the mountain, the footing. You can feel everything a lot more. Yeah, but I suppose you're more open to it. You know, you're not. Kind but of you're more vulnerable. Open. You're not protected, really, as well. You're, it is more that more aliveness. You are more open, really, isn't that? Isn't and it? you can feel the weather, obviously. You know, but like usually, yeah. you're like, oh, I'm covered up. The weather's lashing, but you can actually sense sense it. You know, I need to move out of here, or this is getting too much, or this is not enough. You know, it's kind of. I suppose you're you're opening up a whole different part of your body to sensing. Yeah, well, it's very like I've I've obviously done for eight, I've I'm at nine weeks of just the cold therapy exercise and the breathing, but obviously it progresses on then to more and more outside, more and more extreme. Your it body. doesn't. It doesn't have to like yeah. really. It doesn't have to like for for me and as a, as an instructor, I just the personality I am. I want to to know what those things feel like, yeah. so I can bring back lessons to people, and. And teach them things that they so they don't have to do it. Like you don't have to go up Mount Schnezga in your in your shorts, but the things I will learn from that, I think it's valuable to have done it. So when I'm teaching yeah, people, that, I think you know, it totally is. Yeah, I can pass that on without them having to do it. And with your enthusiasm as well, would make it more attractive. So do you see yourself like uh, you could end up like with ten odd people going down and jumping into the sea there at sea points? Like that's the sort of stuff, and then running up the <laughs> sugar loaf in. <laughs> <laughs> in a pair of speedos <laughs> well I mean it is taken uh, like the Keith Barry you know the magician Keith yep. Barry he, his next um, uh, tour of Ireland uh, apparently is based on Wim Hof he went over and trained with Wim Hof really? and he is now going to be so next year he's going to be going and I think one of his things is submerged for five minutes with no breathing wow so five minutes I've never hit five minutes have you how many minutes have you hit this is with no breath now. Yeah. So the interesting thing about this is that I don't do it anymore. Do you not? I don't time it anymore. Okay. You know, so I went through the 10 week course about halfway through the 10 week course. I kind of came to a realization that again, the timing really, so you, you breathe out and you're kind of, you time to say how long you, you don't have to breathe for before you take a breath. The timing is really for our Western minds, I believe, yeah. to convince ourselves that we're progressing and that we're kind of yeah. getting it, you know? Yeah, they're totally so, that. So yeah. I used to look at the thing and go, Okay, first round, I held it for two minutes. Second round, two and a half minutes, three minutes. And then I kind of thought to myself, from all my other experience, I thought to myself, well, actually, the, the benefit of this is what's going on. Yeah. I'm being fully co you know, conscious of what's going on, not looking at my phone to see the timer. Mm. So I stopped doing that. And then we, we were uh, hollering with Wim Hof and his team. They were saying that that's actually where, they're, that's actually where the, the kind of whole thing is going now. Is that you kind of you do the first bit to time yourself to see how you, far you're going, to but that's all, to prove yeah, it. But okay. then it's actually more about absolutely relaxing. So you, you you probably know then, like I count to thirty breaths, and I don't know if I'm kind of if it's, if it's good or bad or indifferent. But it, so I'm thinking, 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 thinking. Am I doing? You know, and then that'll calm down as I go. Yeah. But you probably can feel now when it's ready to. Yeah, and then so you can you, probably, you don't need to count to thirty or almost do you? Well, thirty is kind of because we've been doing so much now. I kind of know when I've hit thirty, but again, it's that feeling. You yeah, know, it's a certain feeling to say yeah. your body is okay or it's yeah, kind of, and it's and reach that kind of yeah. So as you get to kind of thirty breaths or, or beyond, you, you start to feel the symptoms in your body. You start to mm. feel a little bit lighter, a bit looser. Um, you might get a little bit of tingling, in, and you're and the way they describe it, then you know your body is kind of fully charged. You're ready to kind of yeah. breathe out and, and, and ret retain that, ret to hold that breathing. So so what I do now is kind of, I experiment a lot, you know, so I might do 30, you know, traditional yeah. way, and then might not count at all and just kind of breathe for a really long time yeah. and then do it. And then what I've also been experimenting with is just 10, like after I do maybe three or four rounds, just like 10 breaths and, and do it after only 10 breaths. Okay, and see what that does. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that really charges you full of energy. You know, mm. I used to do it before I went to bed, and then I would lie in there and full of energy. I couldn't go to sleep. So yeah. it's kind of so that, it's, like that. It, that is the thing with it, and I'm gonna. Uh, 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 we're over. We're an hour and ten minutes. I believe. Um, 
I think it is. Uh, I don't really recommend shit to people, although I do get enthusiastic about stuff an awful lot. But for me, this is the proof is in the doing of it. Yeah. It is you. You do feel a natural sort of strength and energy and whatever. I never look forward to doing it, but always I feel great yeah. afterwards. And it, it does for me. It does. I don't know. It. I kind of have become more and more curious about what's possible with the body. Yeah, that's absolutely. And you know, if you look at Instagram a lot, you see all these kind of inspirational phrases like you know, do the impossible or anything is possible. Yeah. You know, and what has struck me about Wim Hof method is that it proves to yourself that we are capable of doing way more than we can, and it's not just a phrase on Instagram. Yeah. You know, if you would have said to me a year ago that I could run up the sugar loaf twice. With my just in short in the dead of winter i would have told you there's no chance i could do that yeah now everyone doesn't have to do that no but in a, it should be just a gradual thing but it just proves to me that we are actually uh, genuinely we are capable of far more than we think we are that's the amazing thing that it gives you the sense of it's and it's even the simple cold shower i don't it, there is i don't think i can do a cold shower it's the worst idea in the world blah 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 blah, blah and then it's I've done a cold shower and I feel transformed. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's, oh, I'm really selling it now. You don't need to, cause, but it, it's almost brand new, and especially in the cold, in the fucking depths yeah. of winter when it's yeah, really yeah. cold. The fear that I don't want to do it is like an any possible thing that you might not, and then the feeling afterwards of, oh, I've just done that. Yeah. It's that, it's that kind of, again, you're proving it to your, maybe your subconscious you can do this yeah you know, and if you can do, if you can get into the shower in the depths of winter yeah even for cold. 30 seconds you can nearly do anything after that. yeah yeah like, I, 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 I had, I had this yeah. you know i had been talking to a group of um women about wim hof and one of them was she's always cold and she was like i'm you know i can't get into a cold shower never yeah and then left it with her and then she came back a while ago and she, and she does them all the time now and and mm. that for her that was the impossible yeah you know she was saying there's no way i can do a cold shower and you know and so that was a huge result for her and i think yeah if if nothing else that i got from forgetting everything that may or may not be true it's true for me but it's that feeling of um i really don't want to do this i can't do it no way why would i do it and that feeling of oh i've just done it (laughs) and it's well and it's nowhere near as bad no it's bad yeah (laughs) it's not easy it's not easy yeah it is not easy but um when we first started my wife Josie used to get like out of the sea like she went from the from the cold showers into the sea yeah. in the depths of winter having not swam in the sea for a long time and she used to get out of the sea and she, and she used to say I feel like I could lift a car you know yeah. that was the kind of feeling of power and that was from a, a person who a couple of weeks before that was really struggling to, to manage the grief she was in you know yeah. and, and it's just it's we avoid like we were kind of saying this downstairs but we avoid discomfort like it's the last possible thing because no matter how we're feeling horrendous we will definitely avoid discomfort yeah. we will just it's the last place you want to go to but yet somehow or other in that discomfort there seems to be release yeah. or relief or whatever the fuck i don't know what the fuck it is i heard a great description of that and somebody was saying that if you if you only do the easy things in life then life becomes very hard yeah. if you go out of your way to do the difficult things in life it becomes easy then yeah, life yeah. begins outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, apparently. So like, so if that is getting in the shower for twenty seconds and doing that every day, you know, then the other parts of your life become a little easier because you know you can do this. And I don't know how often if you ever have a warm shower these days or whatever. I or, do, yeah. but that's the and beauty. they are amazing. If you do have a warm yeah. shower, it's one of the greatest things ever. You rediscover the joy of them almost. But yeah. see, that's the that's why the the method is so good because it's a contrast. It's not all cold all yeah. the time. Yeah. Because you actually want your body to be in the warm and it's the transition from the warm to the cold and back again mm. where all the benefits really kick in okay you, you know so it's, it's kind of as we said it's like lots of breathing no breathing cold warm oxygen carbon dioxide it's kind of taking the body to the limits yeah. then it finds its balance so it's the cold as well so like okay. the transition from cold to hot is actually really important yeah okay because i wasn't for the few months anyway we're going to fucking stop your look i definitely you're <laughs> going to come back um when you be a teacher maybe in the new year or something yes, like that you'll be a teacher um all right thank you very much buddy really you're really enjoyed that cheers bye-bye yeah let's make it here it slides doesn't it
Just it disappears into fucking thin air. Hi, if you like the conversation that I just had and you'd like more, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Bye.